That's kind of mean because, like, just because their bellies are plain and they don't have stars on it doesn't mean that they're not special. Right. Doesn't mean they're not special. Noah? It's almost like what happened back then, how people were treated, like, uh, like disrespected. was made in that time. Like, white people disrespected black people, but then they might stand up. In the book. Oh, so we're, let's keep reading to find out if they do stand up maybe a little bit. So when you say stand up, get included. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for, right? Yeah. NPR podcast Planet Money, they were recording an episode about an economics lesson, potentially for little kids, these elementary kids being read a book. Uh, if you couldn't tell from the context of what they were talking about, it was Dr. Seuss's Sneetches. Uh, yeah, I grew up on Dr. Seuss. I read my kid Dr. Seuss stuff when he was younger. But at this particular Ohio school where they were filming and recording the reading of this to talk about this, some kids chimed in with what they were using to analyze it, a bit of reading comprehension. Something that's important to learn, maybe analyzing the uh, the storyline that's being told and maybe the lessons being learned. Well, it's one particular uh, administrator at the uh, event stepped in and decided to do something else about it. Let's listen to that. At this point, Amanda Beeman, the communications person with the school district, stands up. She looks really upset. She waves her hands to get Mrs. Robeck's attention to stop reading. Um, so I'm scared of the homeless. Yeah, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable with this book being one of the ones featured. I just feel like this isn't teaching anything about economics, and this is a little bit more about differences with race and everything like that. Um, so do you mind, Mrs. Robeck, if um, we pause this book? I mean, we this, we have a list here of all the things. This is about preferences, open markets, yeah, economic laws. I just laws. don't think it might be appropriate for the third grade class and for them to have a discussion around it. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. If that's true. Okay. I just, as someone, I just don't think that this is going to be the discussion that we want it to around economics. So, I'm sorry. We're going to cut this one off. They're cutting this one off. We're not sure if this is going to be a good one about economics. By the way, uh, the book Sneetches, I guess the part about it, about economics is the fact that uh, Sylvester McMonkey McBean showed up and started exploiting them for their uh, racism. (laughs) It's really what it was. Let's keep it real. So it's a bit of a a society lesson and also a lesson in capitalism. Making sure that you exploit the folks that you can as much as possible until they are dead ass broke. Uh, Graphic too though, you guys, I want to talk about what is it happening, the names behind it. Because NPR reporter Erica Barras, she spent the day in uh, Ms. Robeck's class with Beeman for that podcast, as you heard. As part of the district stipulations, politics were off limits, they said. Six books were selected ahead of time by Barris and the district, including Sneetches. I'm not sure the people who chose the book to use here, as one of the ones that they had accepted, had ever read the damn book. Because the first thing that I think of is exactly what I think a second or third grader in that first audio was saying. It's like racism. When folks treat others differently because they look differently and they think they have more power over them. And then they get to switching up and trying to change society based off of it. Weird how children can pick up on that. And then once they do, she said this, I don't know if I feel comfortable with this book. Yo, bro, it's not about you. And sometimes when you learn something, you have to be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Jackson? Well. I think one of the things I've come to learn and understand is that when you take the approach of just don't learn about it, don't talk about it. One, that reflects that you yourself don't know that much about it. And also, it's just, you know, you take that outside of just like a child's book, put it on more taboo subjects like sex education, STDs, you know, ew, don't, I don't talk about that. We don't want our kids learning about anything like that. And then, like, you know, you have increased rates of pregnancy, increased rates of no condom use and stuff like that. Or whether it comes to other types of healthcare issues, you know, like, like the things that people just don't want to address because it's like taboo or socially icky. You know what I mean? It, all that does, again, it reflects that you yourself don't know much about it. And also, it, it, it just continues the cycle of ignorance. You know, for instance, like I, I know I set the chat ablaze when I was talking about spanking kids. I don't got no kids, so oh, is that what happened? I, can't. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> oh no, I know, I know, I did. You know, I, I often say things that will get let, uh, that will send leftists ablaze. Not crazy stuff, but stuff like that. But I'm willing to. I don't really necessarily know what I'm talking about about parenting. I ain't got no kids, so I'll sit there and get scolded. You feel me? I'll listen, but I'm not going. Oh, oh, I'm totally right about this. Don't talk about it. You know, then then you just again the cycle repeats about racism. 
sexism, homophobia, being against the transgender community so much that oh, they're not even people. I don't, I don't, I don't care about. I don't care that they're out here getting murdered just for existing. You know, the, that that comes from. I don't want to talk about it. Screw it. Don't. Eat. So it's. It, it's so stupid, but again, it just reflects the ignorance of the country. Well, people don't want to talk about things or accept other points of view when they're uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And that's what she said, I'm not comfortable. I'm not sure if I feel comfortable yeah. with this. That's the problem. One more piece here, last uh, graphic here, number five. Uh, so as Sneetches was being read, this is what she said. I made a personal judgment call that we shouldn't do the reading because of some of the other themes and undertones that were unfolding that were not shared that we should be, that we would be discussing with parents. Again, I've said it 18 times. I got a kid and in like first grade kindergarten, they were teaching about Thanksgiving. They were teaching about the pilgrims and the Native Americans, right? And you know, feather hats were made. We did all that stuff in 1987 too. So it's the same thing over and over again. They didn't discuss with me whether or not I want my kid learning it in that way, but he did and I had to undo what they had learned. That's one of those things that happens. They didn't review all that stuff, but that stuff has been happening since forever. When are they gonna start reviewing that? When is the superintendent gonna step in and go, I'm not sure if we'd be teaching this anymore like this. Because you guys are now telling kids that uh, that slavery was a great institution. They don't, they, they were, they were they, in, in some schools they've called them servants. Or, or somehow making it seem like they're working and getting some kind of compensation for it. Get out of here. Anyways, those things aren't reviewed, but things like this are because there's certain folks and certain parents that they are afraid of.